The Autodesk Model Checker for Revit comes with the BIM interoperability tools, and it has a feature that lets you automate running of the checks on your Revit model files. Details about setting it up and the basic use can be found in the Autodesk Knowledge Network. This video is going to build on that information by talking about using the Windows Task Scheduler to give it even more of a hands-off approach. The automation functionality was specifically designed to let you run your checks without touching Revit at all. Now, something to note is that a lot of what we're going to be showing in this video specifically is Windows based. So those features are not supported by Autodesk, but automation was designed in such a way to leverage that functionality. You may need to make some tweaks and some adjust adjustments for it to work in your own environment, maybe the security requirements, but the basic workflow should be similar. So in terms of how automation works, it is really simple. Revit starts, and then the model checker looks for a specific folder on your hard drive that's predefined. And if it finds a properly configured XML file in there, then the model checker automation is going to open up and it's going to run checks on the configured files in that XML before anything else happens inside of Revit. So in theory, it should be pretty straightforward to use the Windows Task Scheduler because all you need to do then is tell Task Scheduler to run Revit. So you need to get your files ready. Obviously, you need to have your models set. You need to have your model checker check set. You need to create your automation XML file. And then we're going to create two tasks in this video. One is to run Revit. And then another one is to shut Revit down. In the Revit API, there is no supported method to close Revit itself. So we're going to try a little cheat. Um, we're going to try a little workaround that's going to close Revit for us and uh, keep it closed, obviously, until the next time that we run it. So in terms of my um, model files, I just got a sample folder here. Here's three model files that I'm running on. Here is my XML that I have created for model checker. Um, here is a batch file that I'll talk about in just a little bit. This is a folder that I've created that's going to store my exported Excel files once my model checkers run on these, these models. And then I need to create my automation XML. So here on the AKN, this tells you the details about setting up your XML file for model checker automation. Here's the layout of it. It tells me about the different configuration settings. And then if I look in this folder, so here on C, program data, Autodesk, BIT, model checker, and then there's a year for each version of Revit, and I'm going to try 2021 at this point. There's a folder called automated runs, and in here I have an XML file, and if I want to take a look at that uh, real quick, here's that file. It's XML, so it can be edited in any, any of your favorite text editors. You'll see here's the overall uh, container, here's one model, here's that second model, here's that third model, this is the path to the model file. This is the path of the check set. And then these are the different configuration settings for each of those check sets. So one thing I want to point out here is under cleanup, I've got this set to none. This in, in what I'm doing, what I want to do here is set up a task scheduler that's going to run maybe once a day or once a week. So if my cleanup is set to none, then once it is done running, the automation is going to leave this XML file here in this location. So Revit can find it again when it starts up one more time. If this is set to uh, delete or rename, it's going to move this XML file. So next time my task scheduler runs, uh, it's going to have uh, no idea what to do with it at that point. So I mentioned the task skill or the task kill uh, feature in here. You'll notice I've got a kill Revit batch file. I'm going to make a task for this because this as well. This also is a Windows feature. It is a command called task kill. And then this lets you by command line shut down any application that is running in Windows. If you do forward slash IM, it's going to look for the image name or the application name, and then it's going to try to close revit.exe. So again, there's nothing supported in the Revit API that is going to allow the automation functionality to close Revit for me. So what I'm going to do is create one task that's going to start Revit. 
model checker automation will kick in. It will make my checks for me. And then I'm going to create another task that's going to shut Revit down. And this is kind of an estimate. This is me guessing. I'm going to have a general idea of how long my checks are going to take to run. And then I'm going to add some time. And that's when I'm going to create my second scheduled task to close Revit down. I'll make sure I have enough of a gap there for Revit to open up, for it to run my checks um, before I kill Revit. So it's, it's very straightforward. Here I am in Windows Task Scheduler. I've created a new folder called My Tasks. There's no reason for, for you to do this. I just like keeping things a little more organized. And then all I need to do is create a basic, basic task over here. Windows is going to open up a wizard to walk me through here. And I'm going to call this my Revit 2021 um, auto model checker automation. I'm going to say next. How often do I want this to run? So this is the schedule I can go on right now. I'm going to go as um, one time just for the demonstration of this video here. I'm going to say next. It is 9.15 now. I'm going to go ahead and set this for 9.20. And I'm going to say next here. My action is going to be start a program. All I need to do is open up Revit. So I'm going to say next here. It's going to ask me where the program is. I click browse. I'm already over here in my Revit 21, 2021 folder, but you'll see I'm on my C drive, program files, Autodesk, Revit 2021. And then I just need to find Revit.exe. There's a lot of stuff in here. It's alphabetical, so I'm singing the alphabet song in my head. Here's Revit.exe. I'm going to say OK. This is what's going to start. I'm not going to worry about any arguments. I'm not going to worry about my start in folder. I'm going to say next here. And I check things out. It's going to start at 920. It's going to start the application. And I'm going to say finish. So here is my simple task. And obviously my trigger could be set to run periodically, maybe every day, maybe other, every other day. The next task I want to kill is the one that's going to shut down Revit. So another basic task. I'm going to say Revit 2021 shut down. My trigger is going to be one time. I know my checks are going to take a couple minutes to run. So while Revit's going to start at 920, I'm going to start task kill at 925. So I'm going to say next here. I need to start a program. Say next again. This is that uh, batch file that I created and showed. And that is going to be found on, I've got a folder called C demo automation. And then here is kill Revit.bat. I'm going to say open for that. I'm going to say next and I'm going to say finish. So I've got two tasks here. One is going to start Revit. One's going to close Revit. And I've given it enough space in between to let those checks run and let it export the um, values for those checks. So what I'm going to do at this point is just bring up the Windows clock and it's 917 now. Revit should pop itself open at 920. And then it should shut itself back down at 925 and I will do some trimming and speed up the video a little bit. Uh, so you don't have to sit here and just watch me watch the video do nothing for the next the next, uh, you know, eight minutes there. So that's it. It is almost 926. Uh, both of my tasks have run. If we take a look here, we can see in terms of the um, do a refresh, the operation is completed successfully on both of my tasks. So I, I did nothing while this was happening. I stepped back, I was checking some email on my phone and, and that was it. You notice you didn't actually see the models open up, but if you'd watched the status bar down in the lower left corner, you could see the progress of it going. And to confirm, if I come down here now and I look under my results folder, I've got three new exported Excel files. They have the um, date, and time marked on here and they have the name that I set up in my export and these are the three different Revit models that I had set up as well. If I need to do any other confirmation, the model checker automation, if I come back here to uh, the model checker folder, there is a logs folder here 
And if I sort or scroll down, I've been doing a lot of testing, obviously. So here is uh, that latest run. And here's a log file that I can open up and check out. And I can see what it did. And it opened the models and it exported the models and it closed them up. Like I mentioned, the automation feature does not close Revit for me. That's why I had to set up that uh, task kill event. But other than that, pretty straightforward. Two events, start Revit, close Revit. It opens my models. It runs my model check. It exports the results if I have set it up to export results. And then it saves those models for me. So that's pretty much it. That's pretty straightforward, hopefully. Uh, some quick closing notes. Don't forget in your automation XML, you probably want to set your cleanup to none so you can do this on repeating fashion. Taskkill.exe is helpful. It is not officially supported. And you want to be able to give yourself enough buffer between running your model checks and closing down Revit. Because there's no there's no um, easy close down of Revit. It just, Windows kills it. It's like you went to Task Manager, found the event, right-clicked and said, uh, end task. Unfortunately, Windows has to be logged into run Revit. Revit still uses a UI. So even though in your task event, you could say run as this user, you need to be logged in for it to activate. And again, look at your log file to track down issues. Beyond that, hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully this helps automate some of your model checking tasks and kind of can offset it to maybe 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. or the weekends. Um, and you can, you can utilize the model checker a little more effectively and a little more efficiently.